Hello, I'm Trevor Last. This DVD covers how Alan and myself grow our exhibition Cresants. It was filmed in the year 2006 and goes through month by month what we were doing. Alan grows both earlies and lates where I mainly concentrate on the lates. The cultivation of both earlies and lates is the same until the time they are either planted out in the ground or put into their final pots. And from this stage separate DVDs will be made to show how you treat earlies and lates. We will now have a look at how I heat my greenhouse and construct my propagating bench. First the sides are constructed 6 inches high. The whole bench is then lined in polythene. A gap is left all the way around the box. This is to allow the heat, which is provided by tubular heaters fitted underneath the bench, to circulate around the greenhouse. The heating is controlled by a rod thermostat shaded from the sun. Another rod thermostat is fitted into the propagating bench, about two inches from the bottom. This controls the heating cable which is placed on a two inch layer of sand. The cables are laid backwards and forwards about three inches apart. They are then covered with another two inch layer of sand. All the cuttings will be rooted on this propagating bench. We now move on to Allen's where he is having a spring clean. These are then put in a sterilising liquid, uh, Trio 100, obtainable from a local supplier, and then left in there until I wash the next batch. And they come out of there and either sand either outside if that's not too windy or on the bench in the greenhouse till they dry. Alan's plants have been overwintered in the cold frame. And as you can see, the shoots are starting to come away nicely. And now is the time to move them into the greenhouse and put them on the propagating bench. It is very important to keep a record of the dates all tasks are carried out. And you will find this very helpful in future years. And to finish our first visit to Allen's, we will have a look where he grows his early croissants. With the covers removed, and open to the elements and this allows the rain to soak the ground. We've now returned and as you can see the cuttings are now starting to come away very nicely on the propagating bench. We will now show you how Alan takes his cuttings. The dates cuttings are taken will be different from all cultivars and this is information that you have to obtain from a local grower to your area as the dates vary in different parts of the country. Alan's mix for taking these cuttings is as shown on the screen. Alan takes his cuttings one cultivar at a time using a sharp knife take as many cuttings as possible so you've got plenty to choose from. Hormone rooting powder is used to assist the rooting. Yeah, well, what I've done, I, I don't always do this, but I've watered this, soaked it in water, before you know, before I actually do it. Right, I just want to clean my board before with a drop of antibacterial cleaner. Just a quick squirt. Wipe over. Just to make sure there's no bugs and things. Right, and then we just trim the bottom leaves just below the leaf joint.
Just in. Alan has a machine for printing out his plant labels. Print. And there she comes. Okay. Stick it on there. And on the top is the date. And then we have one label in the end of each row. So everything in front of that label is the whatever that says on it. There we go, that's a full tray. On the bench. Right, once they're on the bench, a little water just to settle each cutting in. Make sure there's soil around them. Because I'm not a tongue usually during the day. First thing in the morning, a quick spray over, and then cover it with a. So what's that to keep the sun off if it comes out? Of it? Shade them, and it also keep them nice and turgid. You know that the that stop and wilting. I mean, if you if the sun were to come out today, uh, and you know that um, got hot in here. Well, all the windows are open, I know, but that will keep them nice and moist. And I mean, these will be on here for about 12 days, and they'll be away. I should have them off again. We'll now have a look at how I take my cuttings. I keep my stools in their growing pots, and these are brought into the greenhouse about five weeks before I want to take the cuttings. Because of the milder winters we seem to be having, I no longer have to put the pots onto the propagating bench to stimulate growth. I use a Stanley knife blade to take my cuttings, and again I select as many as possible. And I'm trying to get a cutting about two and a half to three inches long. I like to try and propagate 24 cuttings of each cultivar and all as near as possible the same size. I also use a rooting powder. My mix for taking the cuttings is equal parts of sieve garden soil, peat and grit. No fertilizer is added. I simply dip the cuttings into the rooting powder and they are then pushed into the compost. The label is inserted and the tray is put onto the propagating bench and this is set at 20 degrees centigrade. I grow 24 plants in each half seed tray and a different colour label put in to indicate different cultivars. Well these have been on the bench now about 14 days so they'll come off there and go up to the other end of the house hard enough before we pop them on. Right, now here's the tray. They've been in the other end of the house for about a week and uh, I've now got a three and a half, them on three and a half inch pots. This compost has been in here, well, ever since we mixed it, so that should have got the chill off it, ready for the use. Alan's mixture is first potting on is as shown on screen.
Right, once they get them potted up, a nice spray over the top. Now they don't get watered until they start to gill lick because the compost is already nice and moist and uh, they shouldn't need it. That will make the roots look for the water. After about a, another week, we bring them into the cooler end of the house and put them into rows of each cultivar so then we, we don't get them muddled up. If you just stick them on the bench anyhow, you can get them a little bit muddled and have more difficult time consuming to get them right again. We are now looking at my fair weather cuttings. They have been on the propagator for about two and a half weeks. There are 24 of each colour in a half seed tray and I grow five different colours. You can see by the new growth coming from the centre of the plants that they are now well rooted and it's time to move them into their first move which will be into a three inch square pot. But first we will have a look at the making and the types of composts available. Traditionally, chrysanthemums have been grown in soil-based John Innes mix, which consists of seven parts of loam, three parts of coarse peat, and two parts of coarse grit, to which a John Innes-based fertilizer is added. Here we see the quantities measured out in two and three gallon buckets. Here we see on the right the John Innes based fertiliser and on the left is a modern equivalent Vitax Q4 which has the advantage of having trace elements added so the choice of which to use is yours. A final ingredient which, which is required is a small quantity of garden lime and here we see measuring out the appropriate amount of fertiliser Additional weights are put on the scales and the amount of lime is added. And all we have to do now is to mix it up. I'll just state the quantities again. It's seven parts of loam, three parts of peat, two parts of grit, a quantity of either John Innes or Q4 fertilizer and a small quantity of garden lime. The quantity shown here will make 12 gallons of final mix. There are three strengths of John Innes compost. The number one mix which is used for the initial potting and has four ounces of fertilizer added to each eight gallons of mix plus three quarters of an ounce of lime. The number two mix which is used for the five inch potting and has eight ounces of fertilizer added to each eight gallons plus one and a half ounces of lime and the number three mix which is used for the final potting and has 12 ounces of fertilizer added to eight, eight gallons plus two and a quarter ounces of lime. Water is now added to bring it to the right moisture level. It is mixed dry initially because this helps to mix the fertilizer in more easily. The finished John in this mix and now we just bag it up for further use. I usually take it and store it in my greenhouse where it's nice and warm. I've been showing you how you mix it by hand but I always use a cement mixer. Alternatively you could use peat based composts. The one on the left is a ready mix Levington's which is a very good compost or you can mix your own with peat using a Shempak potting base mixed by hand or through a cement mixer to the manufacturer's recommendation. But the mix I use is 50% Levington's mixed with 50% John Innes compost. But if you don't feel like mixing this mix up, and Levington's do now make a multi-purpose with John Innes added. I've got about 24 plants in there and I only want to cut on 15 more. So I very carefully tease these out and I lay them into the tray and then from there we'll sort out the best 15 for potting on. we now selected 15 out ready to pot in on into three inch square pots. We 
have a tray all ready to go in a cooler part of the greenhouse. We are now three weeks later and the plants are growing well. The heating only comes on if it drops below 40 degrees Fahrenheit. The plants have now been spaced well apart and you'll see that I use a different colour label for each cultivar. We're just having a look at Alan's plants. We're now in the first few days of April. The plants are almost ready to pot in on their five inch pots. Watering is carried out when necessary to individual pots. All I want to do is just put that in. Fairly big lumps in there. We don't sift that out. Once the peat has been prepared, peat is mixed up with K's chrysanth compost base mix at the recommended rates. And this is all put through a small cement mixer. Right, well, you're now going to mix up some mix for your five inch pots. Could you explain what you're going to put into them? Yeah. Here I've got shamrock medium coarse peat mixed. To, with the appropriate amount of fertiliser from the K's chrysanthemum base fertiliser. That's pre-mixed and then I'll mix 50% of this one, my own mix if you like, and 50% of Arthur Bowes John in this. Number two you're using for five inch pots. Yeah, that's some grit. This again I put through. You mix up proportion using a bucket. Now add in the peak mixture. done nicely moist and a mixture of 50% peat mix and a 50% of a John in this mix. Plants are now moved into Alan's cold frame. Yep. See the walls of the cold frame have been whitened to help reflect the light. Inside the cold frame we've got a thermostat set at about 35 40 degrees which is wired into a, a little tubular heater which comes on if there's a chance of frost. 
Glass frames are used to keep off the rain and these are removed if necessary to regulate the air. Plants have all been spaced out and they're filled with roots and they're three inch pots they're ready to go with the five inch pots. We'll now look at some Warman's Glory ready to move on to their five inch pots. And what we're trying to do is to get we can all the way through plant of the same size and vigour. See they're pretty well matching. The Warm and Glory family need two stops and on the 8th of April is the time for the first stop. The reasons that some cultivars need to be grown on the second stop is if they were grown with only one stop the resulting flower would be misshaped due to having too many petals. A second stop cuts down the number of petals, giving a flower with a much better form. Also the flower will have a more vivid colour with a second stop. And to do this we remove the small growing tip. To make my mixes for the 5 inch pot I use 50% John Innes compost number 2 and 50% Lemkins M2 to which I add a small quantity of grit. Have a look at some salmon fair weather. Again, note the evenness of all the plants. And here I would have selected from 15 in the 3 inch pots down to 10 to be moved in the 5 inch pots. A split cane is inserted to support the plant and this is secured with a twisted. I use a different colour label for each cultivar. Chrysanthemums and the 5 inch pots are now stood in the greenhouse. Given quite as much space as we can between the plants electric fan heater in there set at about 45 degrees which comes on at night if, if the temperatures drop to that temperature. We're now the 27th of April and we've come down to Allen's again to have a look at him preparing his early bed. What have you done since you took the stools out at the end of last year? Well basically just uh, dug them up, left it till around Christmas time and then uh, Rotivated it for about 9 inches deep, applied 4 ounces a square ounce of lime and left it until now and yesterday I got the flame gun and ran over it with to get rid of the small rubbish that had grown and uh, we're ready to go. Well some people might just put it where the plants are going but I like to do the whole plot because I don't think fertiliser stays in one place, it moves about in the soil and consequently the roots can go wherever they go, they'll find some. You've had your soil analysed this year? Yes, uh, that's been done and I've had the recommendations of what to put on come back. Uh, that is now mixed up in the bucket here. So you don't dig it over again, you just rake it in the top? And don't roll it because it ends up too fluffy just now. So that's ready for you to plant in about three weeks time. Yeah, about yeah, fortnight to three weeks depending on weather. We have again returned to Allen's as this is the time of year when the plants need to be moved on into their final pots. 
This is carried out when the five inch pots are full of roots and this will be over about a three week period as each cultivar becomes ready. Alan's mix for his final pots is as shown on the screen. When we grow exhibition chrysanthemums, we are not only trying to get an exhibition bloom on the plant, we are trying to get it on the day of the show. This is achieved by taking the growing tip of the plant out. This is called stopping. It is known that from the stop to the bloom being out is on average a certain period of time, so we can work back from the show date to arrive at the stopping date. This period of time varies for each cultivar. Right, stop and now this is the 14th of December, uh, 14th of May. Just take this small tip out. Grab it. Well this is uh, just a temporary frame with a four posts, a couple of bits of tile batten and some rocaline round it. And this year I'll put uh, a stretch wrap film that we actually given some time ago. As soon as this, these are planted, that'll be taken down and this is my standing ground for my lights. Alan's earlies are grown in double rows on canes, which are supported on cross wires, the wires being fixed to posts at either end. Well this is my method of caning. Right. Just get a temporary bit of wood, stick it in. So close. How far are they apart? They're 13 inches. Bit close, but um, I'm afraid that is. I have to put them that close, otherwise, I wouldn't get enough. And then just clip the Berkey type clips. Done. That's right. Well, basically, it's just a case of digging. This is soil has been analysed and the fertiliser added last weekend. But either advocate that you put these in an inch deeper, don't you? Is he? According to his article in Garden News. And then I take my clip off. About the middle of May, I give all my plants a watering of systemic insecticide. I use the cup provided to measure out the required quantity. This is added to a watering can, and water is added and thoroughly mixed. When the watering can is full, just a matter of going giving each plant a good drink. This will hopefully keep them clear of the melon cotton aphid and I will repeat this process in the middle of August. For my final potting I use a mixture of peat mixed with Shempak potting base at the manufacturer's recommended rates and a traditional John and this number three mix which remind you consists of two parts of grit seven parts of loam, 
three parts of peat to which is added the following fertilizer. For my in-curve cultivars I use two parts of the Johninus mix and one part of the Shempak mix. For all other cultivars I use a 50-50 mix. The mix is put through a cement mixer with the proportions being measured out using a bucket. And we finish up with a nice open mix with plenty of fibre within the mix. Just from there ready to pot on into the final pots. From the 24 cuttings I originally took of each cultivar I have gradually selected the best plants as I move them on into their next size pot. These were stopped about 15 days ago and you see the breaks now starting to form at the leaf axles. What we now do is sort out from the 10 the, the six most evenly balanced plants make sure there's plenty of laterals coming out and they're nice healthy strong plants and that one looks quite nice and so there's, that one's a bit higher than that one so let's just put that one back for a moment try that one there we now finish up with six what i think are quite nicely balanced plants all the same height all the breaks coming out of them all evenly and we'll now show you how to do the final potting First job is to put a bit of the peat in the bottom. We then put in four shovelfuls, trowelfuls of the compost. And this will get it up to about the height that we require. This comes with experience, this is exactly how much you need to bring it in. What we're trying to do is get the final or the pot uh, soil to come to about that level when we finish potting. We now take that pot, we see there's a sucker on this one. Just use a knife just to cut it off. And there's another little small one there, cut off. Any leaves quite near the bottom can also come off. And top of that tip of this pot, you can see we've got a nice root forming on that one. And then dropping the pot in the pot. I just like to have a twist just to open the roots up a bit and to get them bedded in. We then have another four trial balls of compost around the chrysanth plant. The great again with my stick, just lightly ram it down. Years past, they said you should ram it ever so hard, but I think when you're using a mixture of Johninus and a peat mixture, it doesn't need to be quite as as hard. Another four in, which will bring it to so about. Th two and a half feet, three inches below the top of the pot and this will give us enough room to put in some top dressings of compost on top of the pot um, later in the year. So I'm going to just give it a, a tap and as you can see there we're about two and a half, three inches down to the compost level. For the next month the pots are stood close together, this is called pot thick and here they will stay until they are placed in the permanent standing ground in early July. There is plenty of feed within the potting mix to carry them through this time and all that needs to be done is to water. The amount will depend on the weather conditions. We now are June and all the chrysanthemums are now into their final size pots. One job that needs to be done about this time of the year, the plants which are grown on a second stop need to have the little tips removed from the plants. Here we see a woman's glory which is one of the varieties which is grown on second stop. 
this is where we did the first stop back in early April we're now very early in June and we then remove the little growing tip again just like that from the stop we'll get some more breaks coming away from there and we'll, we'll bring another two away two breaks away so we'll finish up with two four six growing away from this plant now the 24th of June and the Kazants have been in their final pots for between three and four weeks so now time to think about moving them to their permanent ground where they'll stand until they come into the greenhouses middle of September. Before we put them in their permanent standing position we'll have a look at each uh, cultivar that I grow and have a look at a few little jobs that need to be done this time of the year. We're first of all looking at a large exhibition Silver Gigantic. This variety is grown on the second stop. The first stop was down here and we allowed two breaks to go away. It was then stopped again up here and you can see we've got numerous breaks coming away. And we only want to finish with one up this cane and one up this cane. So at this stage we'll just reduce them down to two breaks, the two which are nice and strong towards the top of the cane. Reason for leaving two, just in case we break one off, a little bit later on we will take one of those two off. We're now going to reduce down the brakes on the other side. They're simply out. Again we've just left two strong healthy. Probably this is the one that will go up the cane. Another job to do is to remove any weeds that are, that are growing. Some little side shoots here at the bottom that can be removed. This old leaf which is dead can go. And, f and finally there's one sucker growth coming out and we just simply cut that off with a knife. We finish with a nice clean pot with two breaks coming away at the top of each of the two laterals. The next cultivars looking at the Warman's Glory which are a large single this will eventually finish with six canes going out and have six flowers on it. So at the moment we've got three breaks. It was stopped there originally and it was stopped there, there and there. We're now getting side shoots coming out. Now I like to leave one spare again, so we want two to come up from here, so we will leave the three at the top. And likewise with this one. Finally we'll do this one. This is rather a weak one there, so we'll we'll leave one, two, those three on that particular break and take any side shoots down the plant as well. We're now looking at a John Hughes, which is the in curve. This one's yellow John Hughes. It was stopped once here at the beginning of, of this month, June. We're now getting several breaks coming away. I will require eventually to grow this three up. So at the moment I'm going to reduce it down to five. So it's one, two, three, four, five. So everything else below at this stage will come off. When I eventually cane, put canes in to support the breaks coming out. I'll probably take this lower week or one of it is still as the weakest and it'll leave me with the top four. I'll eventually take one of those out for flowering. And the final cultivar that I grow is another in curve, fair weather, most easiest presents to grow. Again it's it was stopped once at about the 10th of May. We're now getting quite a lot of breaks coming away. In about a week's time they'll probably be long enough to individually cane. I'm going to grow it four up. So I want to reduce it down to about six at the moment. So I usually take them from the top. It's one, two, three, four, five, six. So we take off anything below this. Right, so in, a, in about a week's, week, ten days time We'll then put individual canes in and tie in the four best of those, but I should still lift, leave the fifth break on at the moment. One of the places I've left to stand my chrysanthemums this year, I left a five foot gap 
in between rows of potatoes and I think in retrospect that was not quite enough but that's the only place I've got to put them so the majority of them are going to have to go there now I've leveled the ground out roughly the first thing I'm going to do is lay a piece of my pex down to keep the weeds down next thing we're going to do is lay down the centre centre of the pots to stand on I'm using an old metal electric tray but anything which the roots won't grow through will be suitable the ground is all covered and the metal tray is down ready to receive the plants next job is to put up some metal posts and straining wires between which will help support the plants and the high winds that will undoubtedly come during the year Now come to the far end, put through a hole in the post, we want to get it as tight as we can, and simply <coughs> wind it round, and then we have a nice tight wire to fix the croissants to. We just take the final shoots out, and then we can go and stand it in its permanent place against the wires. Before we do that, we just, we just have a look and see how They've been in these pots for about three, four weeks now. And we'll just have a look and see what the root system is like. Although it's only been in the pot, say, three or four weeks, I'm not quite sure how long now. But you see the, the root system is starting to grow well and there's enough root there to hold the root ball together without the soil falling apart. You know, we're now going to place this in its permanent position. This is a special little clip that holds the cane onto the wires. The clip simply goes round the cane and then clips back round the cane and holds the thing, whole thing nice and securely. The pots have got about a two inch gap between them. This should hold them against the strong winds that might try and blow them over later in the year. We're again back at Allen's to see the progress of his plants. Just taking a general view across his lakes in their standing ground. And in the background we've got the earlies, all the covers yet to be put on. Well, can you talk us through about your standing ground and, and, and what you're actually growing the plants in? Yeah, well, all the lakes are grown in between 8.5 and, and 10 inch clays. Um, stood in two rows about what, 15 inches apart. Um, I have my pots touching, I know it's a bit tight but I'm a bit greedy in that respect. Um, there's a layer of mypex on which I put two, two uh, tile battens about three or four inches apart and stand each pot on on the rail so that stopped the pot being actually in contact with the ground. I don't know whether you're prone to strong winds down here but uh, could you could you give, go through how, how you s support the the plants to stop them blowing over in the winds? On one or two rows you'll find that uh, one end of the row is tied to the upright of the covers and the other end is a six foot three by three post in the ground by about 18 inches or so with, <coughs> with a path across and two tapes going obviously from one end to the other and each pot is then stood underneath there and the um, cane is clipped to the wire twist it twist it over and hook it and this uh, I've found over the years uh, it gives me no trouble at all with wind May you just talk us through the different cultivars you're growing and where they are at the end of June? Yeah well we've got uh, five uh, cultivars of the Fairweather family there's the white, the yellow, peach, salmon and the parent these are now out to <coughs> stopped running four up and each break is 
approximately six inches. There are some slightly less, but in general they're around about six inches. Here we got the Silver Gigantics for the anniversary class. I'm growing them as Ivor Mace told me, on second crown, as you can see. This one here was stopped on the 10th, uh, 14th sorry, of uh, May, and this one on the 24th of May. So you've got 10 days difference and you can see a slight difference in height and then uh, when it comes to the bud I can then decide which one I'm going to keep. We only want one flower per plant obviously for a large exhibition. Right, we're looking at your lundies, how, how do you treat these? Well these, uh, for the first time actually this year, these are being grown second crown as instructed by Ian Moss which, uh, who supplied this uh, stock this year. These are majestic, four different colours parent, bronze, yellow and red. These are first crown stocks and the brakes here uh, what six inches. Right we got Woolman's Glory, the, the large single, five pots of uh, well, the parent, the golden and the red, ten inch pots, note the quite a bit of space in the top of the pots here again for top dressing at a later date. Right and take that down to three. These two at the top are a little bit iffy on the, so we have that one and that one out. Then you go one, two, three, and take the rest out. We're now looking at your door in Statham. Maybe you could, you could tell us how you deal with sec, um, securing your, all your actual laterals see that you don't actually use a cane for each each one no no I use a single cane and then tie each break in till the center cane so on this one as there's just two but when you get three that also come or even four and just tie it to the center cane and they will wobble about but they're secured above the break so I've had no trouble with them breaking off. We now move on to your K woman. Yeah. Now here, they're still on six up, and what I shall do in the next day or two is put a string round all six, just to sort of secure them for the temporary, because I shall flower these at uh, three, but then when I decide which ones I'm going to cook, and I shall do the same as I did on the Statham, take the strings to the centre cane. Just looking one of the problems that we get called croissants, pest called a leaf miner. And it goes in between the leaves and tunnels its way around. Here See? we got uh, Roy Copeland again grown on second crown. I haven't decided yet which ones to take out or leave rather. Just, you'll be doing that fairly soon won't you? Yeah. Um, probably at the weekend, decide which two I'm got or three. I've got another new one, a medium single, Sheila Coles. I don't really know what I'm doing with it, but uh, they tell me you need to grow it like a bush for a start, and uh, otherwise you get too many petals. So here we got one, two, three, four, five, six. That's 18 up at present. <laughs> but I think I should probably seek some advice and get that taken down. You've got quite a few hues, I see. Yeah, well, I've got five of each of the four colours again. Um, these grown first crown, natural break, or what I did was actually stop them on the 1st of June. Although they're natural, I still nip the tops out on the 1st of June just to make sure. Final cultivar? Yeah, this is corn gold which has done me quite proud. Um, this one, first crown, it actually sported for me. It's registered, but not released. So, uh, and that one is a yellow corn gold. Well, things are looking well. We'll come down in about a month's time and, and do another bit of film to see what they're like then. Yeah. Can we now talk a little about your spraying regime? Yeah, well, Basically, it's uh, sprayed every week because I don't mix uh, insecticide and fungicides together. I know you can, but I don't. Um, so it's a weekly 
program. Uh, one week you'll be fungicide, next week you'll be insecticide. I understand that you use Bravado to try and combat the melon cot cotton aphid. Could you just go through what your procedure on that is and what stages you use it? Yeah, I usually use, well, in a five inch pot, dilute the granules in the liquid and then put um, a quarter of a pint to each uh, five inch pot and then that will prevent or protect the plants in their early stages as well as overhead spraying but uh, in late June I then put in a half a pint per plant of the same same liquid or same insecticide and that will protect them till the end of the season until they're cut for shower. Now we're looking at Alan's earlies. I think some of your buds are just starting to appear. Yeah, I have actually got one there that uh, I can take. Right, well shall we have a look at how you secure the bud then, as a, as a first thing? Okay, we're now securing the bud. Well these are head side shoots that I've removed earlier down here and we've now got the three at the top. The centre one there is the bud. There, this one here, take him out. The one just below it and the one the other side and that bud is now secure. Row here of Cornetto, still on three up. They'll flower at two, so when I take the buds, um, then I'll take the, the unwanted one away. Well, that's what generally the weakest spray. Yeah, generally the weakest. Or um, sometimes you can get a damaged bud or something, and then I'll take obviously the one with the bud in any good, or if there's any damage to the stem or whatever. Uh, you've still got a chance of getting two flowers to plant, haven't you? Hey, what, what do you do about growth coming up from the ground? Do you remove that as it yeah, occurs? Uh, actually we've got a bit on the two weeds here, but there is there is one or two uh, bits at the bottom here that can come off from the weed. But generally speaking there... Uh, oh, so you haven't got your covers on uh, over the top, when, when would they be put on? Uh, I suppose another week or so, as I've only got one or two buds secured. Once the, I see several buds coming and then I'll put the covers on. Now look at your Millennium, it seems to be a little bit taller grower than yeah. the Cornetto. Yeah, Millennium is a little bit taller. Um, grown almost identically to the Cornetto. Here again we got three three up till we get the bud and once we get that secured then I'll chop one of them off. See here we got the two brakes secured in. I mean I know the tops but they won't break because they're secured. They can't fall away to break. And you'll put another tie a bit further yeah, up will you? In another, well, any time now, when I get round to it, it'll be tied again up here just to make it doubly secure. This cultivar is a yellow ginger nut. I'm growing these, or I'm going to flower them at one up there at two at present. I've now secured the bud and it's uh, decision time. Which one do we chop off? That's the bit I don't like because. <laughs> Once you've closed the secateurs, the decision is made and that's the end of the... And do you take it all off at once or...? Yeah, straight down, just above the break, chop it straight off. If I was going to have my arm cut off, I'd want to cut off in one, not, you know, a bit at a time. Here we've got uh, Clive Skinner. This has got to be grown the same as the Cornetto and Millennium. I'll have, when I get the buds taken, um, there's nothing there at present. I will then decide 
which one to take off. Right, which one are we looking at now? This one is egret, the white one. <coughs> um, as you can see, I've got one or two side shoots, but um, as I walk around in the evening, I just whip them off as I see them. And then probably have a session and go through every plant just to make sure I haven't missed any. But this, for the first time this year, I'm going to flower this two up. Here again, I've got three as uh, cornetto, but this is only an in curve. But I'm going to try and get a little bigger flower. Whether I shall succeed or not, I really don't know. But well, you've been flowering at three up until now, have you? Yeah, I've always flowered at three. Okay. But I'm going to try it this year at two. See if I can impress the judges a bit more. Max Riley's here. Uh, here again, I'm going to try these at two up instead of three. I've always grown three in the past, but this year I'm going to go for two. They've all they've got three on at present, but I shall definitely take them down to two. Chesterfield, yeah, 25B white. I never really had any success with this. And I'm going to try it again this year and see how it come on. This is one of Rodney's. Um, Bars. Got Rodney Summers. Yeah, yeah, Rodney let me have the, some stock of this, but I can't seem to grow it. I'm keep trying, but not yet. I haven't any good bars of it. Well, it's a nice time of the year, I think. We're now sort of quarter to ten, I think, and it's still quite light. Nice to be out to the garden at this time of night. It's, bit, it's not like this all through the year. <laughs> yeah, that's true. We've got one plant there that looks quite healthy, and the one next to it is quite small. We think this has probably got a virus. This is one you bought in this year, is it? Yeah, this is uh, one of Frank Charlton's. This is the new one, the Primrose Egret. As I grow the other one, I thought I'd try this. But I've got three of the five are okay. Two, I'm not really happy with. They're quite yellowy, aren't yeah, they? And um, you see the veins in them. And yeah, I, I, I really don't know whether to dump it or hang on to it. I think if it was me I'd have them out. But yeah I think you're right. The decision's yours. Yeah I think if I do decide to leave it which I doubt I certainly wouldn't propagate from it. No that's true. I'd be asking for trouble wouldn't it? Yeah. We're now the 7th of July the fair weathers and they've got nice long breaks on them they now need securing individually the canes. Fair weather plant with, it's got six brights coming out which we want to reduce down to four there's a bit of growth around the base that needs cutting off first with a knife I cut off any growth from the bottom remove any dead leaves and then really turn it around and decide which of the four brights I'm going to use Been a, a three foot canes for fair weathers. And tie it off. We use we this one here. Don't be tempted to take the brakes that you don't want at this stage, just in case you catch one and knock it, and knock it off. And if you've already taken down to four and then you accidentally knock one off then I've got enough I don't want that one I'm going to use those two now what we're trying to do is to make them sit evenly around the pot so there'll be plenty of room at the top for the flowers to form once they come and as compact as we can so that we can get as many plants into the greenhouse because we're always short of space when it comes to housing time. So we've got four up canes. We can now remove the brakes if you don't want. Left with a move any more leaves off dead. Four plants ready to put in their summer standing grounds. 
four pots kind. See they're all standing quite close together and hopefully we can, get, we can get them all in that sort of area in the greenhouse later on in the year. 16th of July we're now on holiday. Someone to come and water the plants each day for me. They've all been caned, all stood in their permanent positions. Just give them a dry feed to last them week while we're away. It's the fair weathers in the background. It's a row of John Hughes. All brakes are now tied on in on all cultivars. And the row between the potatoes, they're all also tied in. I've given them a spray with an insecticide before we go away. They were done with a fungicide about a week ago. As soon as we come back from holidays, the potatoes can come up and they give us a bit more room. The main problem we've got is the very hot weather. And if you can sometime during the day, it's best if you can give them a little watering over the top to keep them cool. Put an overhead sprinkler on. I leave this on for about five minutes. And if I'm, a, if I'm at home, I'll do it about three or four times a day to try and keep the plants cool. We're now looking at each of the type of cultivars that I grow. We're first looking at a, a salmon fair weather. It's now got a cane on each break. And the, the last tie was down there and it's now ready to have another tie up here and we shall tie all, all those in. Um, you can see there's a little side shoot just coming out from the leaf axles now. And that's a good indication that a bud is starting to form above. Look at the John Hughes family. I've got three canes in and I've got three tied in. At the moment I've got one spare break on in case something happens to the other ones. Probably in a month's time. Providing this is still the weakest one, that's the one that will come out. Another little job to keep on top of is as the growth forms from the bottom, just lift those out. Something I like to do once a week. First time that I've tried to grow large exhibition, this is a silver gigantic. When we had a look at this plant last time, it had two breaks. Um, or two laterals with two brakes coming off each. I've now tied it so we've got um, just two brakes coming up. This one was stopped about 10 days later than this one. So at some time we've got to decide which of these two brakes to take off because um, we flower these ones one up. We finally have a look that variety or cultivars that I do well with, this is the large single Mormon's Glory, this is the red um, one. Just to remind what we do, it was stocked right down here in the early days of April. It was then stopped for a second time up here um, in, in early June. And from that second stop, I allowed several laterals to grow, and I've now tied in two from each. We've got two from this break, two from this break, and two from that break. And now we've got the six quite nice even breaks. And you see the, the foliage is nice and green. This looks very healthy, and I'm very pleased with them at the moment. We'll now have a little talk about feeding, which would have started about two weeks ago, because the pot would have run out of food by now. There are two types of feed. The first is a, a powder dry and this is a chrysanthemum fertiliser number one which is generally used up until when the bud starts to appear. You then change over to number two. We use this type of feed, a level teaspoonful is just scattered around the pot once a week uh, just before you water and water it in. I tend to use a, a gun to water my croissants. I, I put it on a very low setting, so it's a nice gentle spray that comes out. You really give them a good soaking. Now this time of the year, when the bud's forming, you don't really want to let them dry at all. Now the feed that I prefer is actually a liquid feed. And this is an equal 111, a balanced first, um, feed. And we'll show you how I apply this. What I tend to do is I've got about 100 pots to water. Is I, I mix up 45 gallons at a time. And one of these scoops is the right amount for 5 gallons. I need 9 of these into 
to the 45 gallon drum. Do the hose round and round, get the stuff well mixed in the bottom. Put the hose in so it won't come out. In about five minutes, and hopefully be filled up and we'll be ready to water the presents. I prefer to use the liquid feed over the dry feed because I think liquid feed is available quicker to the plants and you, you can swap around different types depending on what the, the plant looks like at the time. While the butter's filling up with water, there's another job that needs to be done towards the end of July. In fact, this needs to be doing three times during the year, end of July, end of August, and just before you house them in September. And that is to give them a further top dressing. If you remember, we left the compost about two and a half inches, three inches down from the top of the pot when we actually put them up. And what we're doing is now adding a little bit more compost. What I like to use is just a multi-purpose peat based one which you can get from any garden centre. And the idea of this is to give a little bit extra feed to the plants with the nitrogen that's in the actual compost. Um, the roots will come up to the top, will give you a little more, more root and what you're doing is the basal growth um, where your cuttings will come from next year. This helps to promote those so next spring when we want some cuttings uh, we've got some nice healthy cuttings. Have a look now and see whether the actual butters fill up at fill up or not. So we have a nice mixture um, ready colour to the Vitax mixers and I will now show you how I do the watering. Here we've got 45 gallons mixed, it's quite a quick job now to go around on the croissants, filling up the can and we go off to the croissants then. Simply give each one a good drink there's lick feeding needs doing about once a week. Have a two gallon, I get about about seven or eight feed seven or eight plants. What we're looking for with the chrysanth plant is nice even breaks and within the same cultivar, all the plants being the same size. And I'm quite happy at the moment that most of them. Uh, the fair weather are now at about two foot six, these are three foot canes, so they will probably flower about here for a fair weather. The hues at the back will go up to about four foot six and there's four foot canes in there. And again they're, they're relatively um, even, not quite as even as the fair weathers, but I'm quite happy with them. Okay, the woman's glory, fixed to a wire got five foot canes in and they're all looking quite even at the moment. So fixed to a single wire with a special clip just undo it. It simply hooks around the cane around the wire and then back again that holds it nice and secure. Stop it blowing over in the high winds which will come later in the year. Got nine large exhibition mainly gigantics they're about four foot high at the moment and right at the very end again looking quite even there's three primrose k woman and the n6 k woman the moment we're quite happy they're coming but we don't know what the effects of this very hot weather is going to be i think the key is to try and if you possibly can, give them two or three sprays every day if you happen to be at home. If you're not, well, there's not a lot you can do other than water them well before you go to work. One of the advantages of leaving a spare break is if something actually attacks and damages one of the growing tips. We've got one spare and we can, we can take this one out and tie the other one in. So we've got this damaged break, we'll undo the tie which is actually holding that one in position and we'll simply tie in the spare one. 
which isn't damaged at all. And the one that was damaged up there can now simply be taken away. And we've still got three brakes coming away on this plant. It's now the 3rd of August and I've come to Alan's to help him put his cover on his early croissants. How many years do you think it will last, the cover? Well, it'll last about four or five, I reckon. Before that, um, discolour to make it too shading. And when do you ideally like to put it on? When the buds are just starting to come yeah, into colour? About a week ago. About a week ago. Yeah. So that's what be the last week in July if you any. So you normally put them on before the bad bags go on would you? Well once I get a few, I put a few on but not as many as this. Well we are, it's all on, it's just started to rain so yeah. just did it right. So what do you see the purpose of putting the tilt on? Well, for protection really. I mean these, the ones that are already done, are double bud bagged but now I'll only single bag them which is save a bit of expense and uh, <clears throat> also at shade them and keep them cooler because I've got, as you can see I'm near the coast and uh, I've got a breeze coming in off the sea and I don't really need fans so I do actually help to keep them cool Well it's getting quite nasty, I think it's time to retreat to the house I think it's time for a cup of coffee Sometimes you'll get a bud that's a bit cocked and there's a way of straightening it up. And what is that, Alan? Well, all I do is two bits of cane cut into selections. I mean, you can cut them what length you like. You put one just below, a quarter inch or so below the bud on the high side. And then the one on the low side, you push that up slightly. Peg. A peg, ordinary clothes peg on there. Now tomorrow you come back and you'll find the bud has gone slightly away from that cane so you push that up a bit more and once that's square that can come off. Well you've got most of your bud bags on but I think you've got one which you can just show us. Right now how I bud bag <coughs> first little insecticide, a couple of sprays, a little drop in the bag, bag over the top. Now I use this piece of pipe because I don't like sucking insecticide into me. Pop that up into the bag, if I can find the bottom of the bag. Nip. Pull that out. And twist it. And how long would you expect that to be on there? That would be there a week to ten days. Right. Yeah, done. And then that will come yeah. off and the mortise frame and bloom bag go on. Well, we'll have a look at that next, shall we? <coughs> yeah. That ain't very big, but that'll be alright. On these, you've got a little notch in that bottom. I don't know if you can see it, 
in there just to that's where your stem go so that will go in and what you're using a twist it to hold the well yeah I just hold hold the whole things together just loosely that'll actually hold that while I put the bag on once you get the bag on that will hold itself together mm. now what I use is one of these uh, rent to kill fly killer pen just in case there's anything and what was that pen doing? that's uh, a fly killer pen that's got cypermethrin base Have you used the grease proof bags on there before? Yeah, I've used these for a year or two. Yeah, but before that you used grease proof? Yeah, yeah, I, I like these. That's better, they're ventilated. And you also, can you can see exactly what's happening. Yeah. You don't have to cut a hole in to have a look. Yeah. With the reds, or darker colour, which I don't actually grow, you can then put on a shading bag which will help to keep the colour and all I do, all you do with that is slip that over the top they will blow off you can actually if you want to put them under the bag but I prefer to do it this way and if you do get any problem just stick a clothes peg either side of the frame and hold it there I mean it's a matter of choice or even a paper clip yeah, well, we're about a, what, about a month away from the shows now, and you're reasonably happy with what you got? Yeah. Actually, I can do with the show um, this weekend. I've got a nice little vase of five uh, Max Riley there. And they're short stemmed, but they're, not, they're small, but they're nice and nice form on them. Even with a bagging and what have you. What do we find? Sitting in the top of the flower, a bloody caterpillar. Yeah, friendly little beast you don't want to see anything. I mean, have a look at Alan's lakes. The first impression is they're on average about a, f a foot taller than my plants. But I think this is probably because if you look around, we've got trees around and he hasn't got a minor in a much lighter an area position. Not to say these won't be better flowers at the end of the day. I've grown just a few earlies this year and I will show you how to put on a grease proof bag if you don't have a mortise frame. The bag. Now them all bagged. And now the time that the bud has formed at the top, we've got a lot of little side shoots starting to come all the way down the stem. And we now do what is called securing the bud. I just carefully nip out the side shoots from my finger and, and thumb. And 
then we have a bud secured on the top of the plant. We're now a week later and as you can see the bud has started to swell up on this fair weather but further down the lateral we've now got some more side shoots starting to form and these will need to be taken out and this is a job that needs doing about once a week for the next three weeks until we get rid of all the side shoots. <clears throat> we'll now have a look at one of the John Hughes family. You also already see his little bud starting to come there. We're going with his the, the finger and thumb, remove the side shoots. Just to leave one bud on the top. On the John Hughes, I've been growing four up um, until I've secured. I've secured those three buds, and uh, those are the, actually the three strongest breaks. So I'll then just simply take this one off. If the one had taken off and been stronger than one of those three, I would have retied that to one of the other canes. But we've not, it's now been secured, and we'll hope over the next few weeks we'll have some nice flowers forming on the top. The Woman's Glory is now ready for stopping as well. They tend to send out shoots starting from the bottom. The biggest shoots are actually down at the bottom and they're quite small when we get to the top. So we need to work away actually up the plant and these take quite a while to do. There's going to be quite a few side shoots and quite often you can manage to miss some. Um, <coughs> see the, the bud there, it's on the woman's glory, this one is actually um, golden woman's glory. See quite a nice bud, sitting nice and squarely on top of the plant and should give us a good flower. Now that one's been secured, now the bud is only there at the moment, the cane is there. But what I find with the Woman's Glory family, that as the plant and the bud forms, it, it will form quite a long neck and the, the bud will probably still finish up there way above the cane. But shouldn't, obviously the thing is just to cut a bit of the cane off later on. But that will now want just tying in again, do the same on all the rest. This is Silver Gigantic, a large exhibition. We'd allowed two laterals to come up and we'd stop one um, ten days later. As you can see that bud is much larger than this one. It's now a matter of deciding which one we need to cut off because we only flower these one up. Well, I've decided that this bud, the larger one, is the one that's more likely to be ready for the show that I'm after. So it seems a bit brutal but with the secateurs that lateral is taken off and we're just left with one, one break now on one lateral. Just remove any other side shoots. Next job we need to do now we've sorted all the plants out is actually to give them a, a spray. Make sure that you pick a nice still day to do the spraying and never spray into the wind and always make sure you're wearing a mask and make sure you thoroughly soak from both above and below and wash your hands and face once you're finished. As well as this contact spray for caterpillars, I now like to give the second application of the systemic insecticide for aphids and this should keep them clean right through to flowering. The watering can with the insecticide is then dropped into the water bud holding the liquid feed. And go along and I like to give each plant about two pints, which means that this watering can will do eight plants. Well, and we're now coming up to the shows, and looks like your flowers are, are getting there. What do you think of them this year? Well, I've had better. Uh, we're never satisfied, are we? But um, what you see is what you get. I mean, there's nothing I can do now, it's too late. Um, 
and these Millennium on this, this row here uh, a little bit uh, on the smaller side than I'd like but my Cornettos, which is that row there look about up to par, they're probably as good as I've had mm -hmm. but that's all down to the judge on the day Right, let's, let's now see how you cut them and transport them to the shows Because the beauty of this type of bag, as you can see, before you take the bag off, what you got. Um, keep them, because I'll use them again. Well, you knock it just then, or it'll fall yeah, apart. Just caught it on the edge of that mortise frame. Yeah, nine months work down the spout. Right, we're just come getting these ready for putting the flowers in when they for transport with the crocelle in the water, and just fill the little uh, Lucasade bottle these out. To, Split the stems so they take the water up. Try. So what are the varieties we've got there? Cornetto and Bronze Max Riley. Close up the Bronze Max Riley. Close up with a Cornetto. Now the middle of September, we're now looking at the fair weathers. The buds are now starting to swell nicely. Colour is now starting to show, so we now need to prepare the greenhouses to receive the plants. John Hughes is a bit uneven this year. Some are about four foot and some are about five foot. But the buds seem to be swelling quite nicely. K Woolman really now desperately need to be housed because they're they've already split their calyxes. The Silver Gigantic again now need to be housed. Woolman's Glory got no nice buds. They've gone up. They weren't. They were quite short a while ago, but they've now gone up quite tall. Probably up to six foot high now. That's what we've got. Us clean out. We've got the cucumbers still growing away nicely in this greenhouse. All the benching needs to come out, the cucumbers taken down and then we need to fumigate the greenhouse. Now the greenhouse seems a shame but we've still got a good crop of tomatoes. I'll probably leave these another week because this is where the woman's glory will be housed and they can stand out under a covered area probably go back in here in about a fortnight's time. The first thing I like to do is spray the inside of the greenhouse with a household bleach or something like chaise fluid. This is then allowed to dry before I fumigate the house. Sulphur candles are then lit. The fumes from this will kill off all the bugs in the greenhouse. Make a hasty retreat because if you breathe this in it would make you feel extremely ill. After a few minutes, we've got a really thick cloud of smoke within the greenhouse. 
See the smoke escaping from the top of the greenhouse. When all signs of the smoke have gone, the doors are left open overnight. The following morning, I fix a muslin with pegs to the inside of the greenhouse. This is to shade the flowers and to stop the condensation falling on the blooms. We now need to prepare the plants to house in the greenhouse. Take any side shoots out that are still growing. Take any dead leaves off the bottom. And then we'll cut off any basal growth. I think I was now ready to go into the greenhouse. Careful not to hit the actual buds as you come through the door because I've lost many that way. And these shorter varieties of fair weather will just go up, a few of them will just go up on my staging at the back of the greenhouse. So I can get about 10 on there. The rest of the pots are brought in and stacked neatly in the greenhouse. The plants have now been in for about 10 days. So they're now starting to open up quite nicely. Most forward of my fair weathers are the yellow ones. Here, the buds are a bit more even than on the John Hughes. They're probably all sort of within a week of each other. They seem to be quite nice at the moment. First time I've grown large exhibition. We've just got six in here. All seem to be much at the same stage. The most forward are the K Woman. Doesn't look like, like they're going to be a particularly nice flower. But they've got surprising how they do open up, up after a while. And I haven't given them up given up on them yet. We use the term calyx splitting. You can see the little skin that goes over the top of the um, bud is now splitting away and the colour is just starting to show. I then quickly move on to the next stage which will take about four or five days to get to the size from the calyx split. And then you've another few days on, they'll be open like this, and then they will finally start to drop the petals down into a ball shape. One of the cream John Hughes now beginning to drop open. I guess it's probably about another month before it'll be fully ready. Only water now about every two or three days and then I only give them a little bit. The muslin keeps the, the moisture droplets off in the morning and evenings and helps the shade on a very warm day like it is now. It's still quite warm weather at the beginning of October and I still leave the doors open if it's going to be a nice day. See I've got the, the heater ready, it's on the thermostat which at the moment is set at 60 degrees and that's why I now like to keep them until they flower. I've also got a dehumidifier set up, it isn't being used at the moment but as soon as the conditions start to get damp um, it will be turned on and used all the time. But then you must make sure the door is closed otherwise you'll be trying to draw the air out of all of Norfolk. The Woman's Glory family were moved under this simple cover about a fortnight ago and the calyx is now starting to split on the buds and it's now time to move them into the permanent greenhouse. And now we're all safely in and the final job to do before the buds get too large is to give a spray with an insecticide against red spider mite. 15th of October, just a general view. On the left hand side we've got the John Hughes, the Fairweather in the middle. And I've just got six gigantic 
on this side. A good closer look at some. White fair weather. Salmon fair weather. The peach fair weather. Yellow fair weather. Then very high up, I've actually got the fair weather itself. Typical of the size we've got to go and put my hand there, give you some idea of size. Got a few K warming. I don't think I should probably bother about those again because they're more or less ready now and they're not very nice shape anyhow. There's the John Hughes. Seems to have ever so much petal in the middle and whether that will all come out and form a nice round one. We'll find out in a couple of weeks time. Yellow Hughes. Any trouble as you can see we've had a little visit from a caterpillar. I can't catch the little bugger. And the cream Hughes. The Mormon's glory starting to come out. I think they're going to probably about be about right for the national. Mormon's glory itself is about where most of them are. There's a few a little bit more advanced. The reds got quite a few of those now starting to drop open. And the golden glory are the most advanced. Crimson glory got a lot of those at these. They are usually the weakest of the four of the glory. So how do you think they are compared to other years? They're looking promising, as, as far as I dare say. Um, there's still a long way to go to the show. So um, hopefully they'll be there. Uh, there's nothing I can do about it now, only perhaps a little extra heat, but I don't want to do that. It's in the lap of the gods, I suppose, really. So how are you controlling the heat and the humidity and everything? Well, I've got a 12 inch fan, 12 inch fan I should say, hung upside down on this timber, an oscillating fan for the air circulation. On the right hand side I've got an electric fan heater. Um, the reason I've got that fan on its side is because the louvers <coughs> then throw it out into the middle of the house. And below there, I've got my dehumidifier. On there, there's tubular heaters fixed to the walls by the side of the house. Four six foot heaters controlled by a thermostat. What temperature do you like to try and keep it out of here? I like the fair weather's between 55 and 60, but that's not always possible because they can't afford to run the too much heat. But that's ideal. Um, well, it looks like you've got some nice corn gold here. Yeah they're coming. Hopefully that'll be Southern Group Western. Roy Coopland, they're going to do you for the later shows aren't they? Yeah, yeah they're coming. Cream hues with some white in the background. Alan's rather worried that it's got a lot of petal in this year. I think if he pulls some of the ones out around here later on. They'll probably still drop down and be okay. Gold Coopland, that's looking okay as well. Some Primrose, John Hughes, and then some K Warman. If they come out, they've got to be one hell of a flower. Yeah, Darren Pooh, so that's their last chance this year, yeah. is it? Definitely. And the Yellow Hughes. Bronze Gigantic. Put my hand beside it to give some idea of scale. Now move through into the second compartment where we're looking at the salmon fair weather. Again there seems to be a hell of a lot of petrol this year. Yellow fair weather. Fair weather itself. White fair weather. And peach fair weather. His late singles and Dorian Statham are under his early covers. A few shots of my flowers just prior to cutting for the national. At show time I am very busy and unfortunately I didn't have enough time to do any more filming. Primrose John Hughes, ready for cutting. the best 
Vase, Bishop Primrose, John Hughes. Reasonable size, those ones. Another vase of Primrose, John Hughes. The yellow, probably the weakest ones. And he managed to find five of those, which are somewhere near around. Cream Hughes. And then John Hughes itself. Probably they're not too bad, but a bit small. The Crimson Woman's Glory. The Red Glories. Ready Crated. Got the ink curves in between the singles. I've just got a piece of muslin over the ink curves to stop them bruising en route. We hope. Here we have class two, calling for four vases of three, various types of flowers. The clear winner is Trevor Lust with four nice vases of incurve and winner of the Silver Jubilee Trophy. In class eight, we have five very nice Primrose John Hughes, shown by Trevor Lust, which won the special award for the best exhibit in the open classes. Also in Class 16 was a special award for Alan Watson for the best vase of decorative in the show with Golden Roy Coupland. Class 19 for the large singles was won again by Alan Watson with the best vase of large singles, Woolman's Glory. It's now the 24th of November and all the shows are finished. It's now time to have a clean up and save the chrysanthemum stools that we need to propagate from next year. When cutting my flowers I mark the best plants with a peg and these are the plants that I will keep for next year's stock. I make a start by cutting all the flowers off to about the top the canes. I'll go through the whole green that's before I carry anything else out. In a couple of minutes we've started to make it look a bit tidier. The next thing I do is to remove the plants that haven't made the grade from the greenhouse. I take off any twisters that are left. The canes are removed labels removed for use for another year. As I said these are the ones that haven't made the grade but we simply cut them off, bag it up and the pot is removed from the greenhouse. Just over an hour later all we're left with is the plants that we want to keep for stock for next year. We're now left with our stock plants. Again, first thing to do is remove any twistits and remove the canes. What we're going to do is cut this down in two stages. Initially it's going to be cut to about, these are Hughes, John Hughes, it's going to be cut with a break and that was about two foot, two foot six. This bag up, note we've still got the peg and the label. This is now removed to the coal greenhouse for a period of fertilisation. We've now moved on a week and it's the 1st of December and it's now time to remove all this greenery. Still got the short cane that went in the early days and we've still got the peg which marked it as the one we want to keep for cuttings. Cut it off to about a foot above the soil level. <coughs> what I'm using is a very sharp pen knife to remove all these, all these bits can be just pulled off down the stem. And it's from where we make this cutting just above, or this cut just above ground level. That's where we get our shoots coming for next year. Next thing to do is to use some multi-purpose compost and just a small arrow over the top and this will help protect any side shoots that come out 
before we bring them into the greenhouse to propagate and give, us, give the plants just a little bit more goodness to help them grow and here we have the label Patricia Miller and the final job to do I just give them a light spraying over an insecticide to kill off anything that might be there these pots will now remain here the first ones will come out in early January the fair weathers and the woman's glories something like the hues won't come out until the end of January so I'd like to get the cuttings for those about the end of February anyhow they're now going to get at least a month if not six weeks fertilization that's where we try and keep the temperature well, it's up to the elements of course but we want to keep the temperature down to below 6 degrees centigrade if we can for about a five week period we'll now move to Alan who treats his stools in a completely different way come out of the pot Yep, he's. I don't want that under. I should have cut that off. But. All the soil is then removed with a high pressure water jet. Yeah, cut the roots off just to tidy them up a bit. Nothing, no rocket science, like, you know, just to get the. There you go, he's ready now for hot water treatment. Here is the hot water boiler in which Alan treats his stools. Well, I'll just set the timer now from well, I'll set it. Reset. I'll set it to five minutes. Right, before we put them in, make sure every stool has got its own label. So if, if they do come adrift, you can't lose them. You've always got your cultivars marked. Right. Set the timer as five minutes. As I drop them in, press the button, and it'll now count down from five minutes to zero when it'll come out. But the temperature is set at 46 degrees, and that <coughs> that will stay there 46, and that will come on. If the temperature drop below 46 to 45 nine, it will then switch on again up to 46. Once the five minutes is up, they're taken out of the hot water and plunged into a bucket of cold water. Once the these come out of the cold water, just leave them on the bench now overnight, probably 24 hours, and then they're ready for boxing up. We then water the tray, which is then moved to the cold frame where it will remain until it's wanted in the early spring to take the cuttings. This is the end of our film and the process will start all over again in the spring.